please, Mr. Giovanni. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Tate, I just want to clarify a couple of things that I heard today. Uh, so first, did you say that you were on a personal trip to France, decided to extend your vacation, go to the Olympics, and then bill the taxpayer for it? Is that correct? I was on a personal trip to France, and I did not bill the taxpayer for my flight or travel from Canada. What did you bill the taxpayer for? The hotel and the train to get to Paris. Where does your personal trip end and your the day I taxpayer get, billing begin? When I, as part of my job being at the, at the opening of the Olympics was absolutely expected of me, so I interrupted my holiday and took the four days to go to the Olympics. Could you understand why that sounds concerning to somebody? Just because, you know, a bit of a weird situation where you get to go on a trip, you're having your personal time, and then you just unilaterally get to decide what becomes work and what doesn't? Well, not if I'm not charging the company for the trip. But you did charge the taxpayer $6,000. Correct. For your when time I was in working in Paris, I did, yes. And you, but could you understand why it would be concerning? I would think that it would be concerning that, that, that I would that be decision it would be concerning if the CEO of CBC Radio Canada did not attend the opening of the Olympics given it was one of the most important events of our calendar year. But when the average Canadian hears that you're charging thousands of dollars to the taxpayer and you are just kind of deciding when your personal time ends and your billable time begins it, it, it gets to sort of a broader concern and to the point about bonuses that many of our colleagues have made today of whether you have respect for the taxpayer. Can you see why that would be concerning to the average Canadian? I do not make those decisions alone. I always check in with my chair and, and I behave in a responsible fashion. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to uh, ask if you agree with a statement that's been attributed to you. Uh, and I'm going to quote, the defund narrative has picked up momentum, especially as it relates to CBC television. Did that come from you? Yes. Okay. So that was reported uh, last week by the National Post from an email they obtained from you, and I believe in January 2024. Is that correct? I, I presume so, yes. Okay. So when you look at the concerns over your expenses right, which I think legitimate concerns over where your personal vacation time ends and where your billable time begins. When you see the concerns over news stories related to your bonuses that are going out and bonuses you may receive or executives receive the $18 million that we've been talking about today, do you think any of that might contribute to what you yourself have observed as a growing movement to defund the CBC? I absolutely do not. Why is that? Because I believe that having experienced now the third um, appearance at this committee, I would say that there is a, um, a, a clear effort on the part of members of this committee to create, to vilify, and to discredit me and to discredit the organization. Not mm -hmm. one question has so, been asked, excuse me, not one question has been asked about the accomplishments of the public broadcaster over the last six years and well, how we I, have I, served I think Canadians. our liberal colleagues have asked you some of those questions, so I think you're, that's not a fair representation of your time here today. But let's go back to something that our colleague, Mr. Coteau, asked you earlier. You referred to KPIs, key performance indicators. Would the idea that a growing movement in our country would like to defund your organization be weighed into an analysis of key performance indicators and determining whether the discretionary portions of the bonuses that you've acknowledged, there is a percentage that is discretionary and not contractually obligated, that those percentages that you might consider, hmm, if people don't like what we're doing, if people don't trust us, if people would like the government to take money away from our bloated organization, maybe we shouldn't be spending more of their money than we have to. Is that, could, could that not cross your mind in analyzing the KPIs? We do not take into consideration political wins or influences in, our, in determining our business metrics. So you would, you would call it a political reaction for the average Canadian to hear that you're doling out $18 million in bonuses, that you're billing the taxpayer for your time in Paris while on a personal vacation. That's a political concern that the average Canadian wouldn't have a pure interest in that based purely on the fact that they are giving you their hard-earned money through taxes? I'm not sure I understand what you're getting at on this question. That, that's 30 seconds, but, but please. You're, 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 you're trying to marginalize legitimate concerns about abuse of taxpayer dollars and any accountability 
that we are trying as parliamentarians Madam to in introduce here, and you're saying it's purely political. And what I'm saying is the big, beautiful, growing movement to defund the CBC is not a purely political movement, but it is a matter of taxpayer accountability. Can you not acknowledge that? I will not, uh, Madam Chair, I will not be accused of abusing taxpayer dollars. I'm sorry for the record. We have managed our uh, budget extremely carefully. We were facing a hundred million. I don't think the Canadian people would agree with you. I don't think the Canadian people would agree with you. Vani, will you allow, allow me to finish your answer? Thank you. We were facing a $125 million deficit. We managed as carefully as we could, and we respected the obligations we had to over 1,180 employees. I believe Canadians will understand. And by the way, 73% of Canadians still consider us the most trusted source of news. 79% of Canadians say they believe that CBC should be in the future of this country. Is that so reported to, on by the CBC? Is that, I think that those facts? Those gone that over time, Mr. Giovanni. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, welcome again, Ms. Tate, along with Mr. Goldblum. I noticed in your opening statement, because today we invited the senior management and compensation at CBC Radio and CBC Television. So your opening statement didn't talk about the compensation. You talked about how accurate your news bureaus are, the trust that people have in you, you're based on facts. But you never talked about the $18.4 million in bonuses. So let me start there again, if you don't mind, Ms. Tate. Um, for 2022-23 bonuses, have you received your compensation package for 22-23? Are you talking about me personally? I'm talking about you personally. So just yes. to be clear for the yep. record, the, the CEO of CBC Radio Canada does not participate in the payment okay. plan that that 1,180 people okay, participate so you in. Haven't the, got it yet. the process is different. It goes from a, a recommendation from the board to the minister okay. and from the minister to PCO. And to date, I have not heard back on that particular on that year how Correct. about this year 23 24 same thing okay so here's what i'm thinking those bonuses are going to be tied into your exit package in in january when you leave so i think it'll it just seems natural to me your fiscal year end is march you haven't received your package i i suspect the previous five years you got a bonus performance bay package you haven't received one for 22, 23, 23, 24, and probably 25 up to January when you leave. So my worry is we're not going to be able to scrutinize this because you're going to leave Mr. Goldblum and as board chair, they're going to recommend a, a bonus package up two and a half years. And we won't get a shot at you coming back here in 25 to talk about it. And that's why Canadians are, are upset about the bonus package. And let me give you a few examples, because I did a survey of my own, and I know it's not Toronto, it may not be Vancouver, it may not be Montreal, but here's what my constituents, when I sent out, 1.4 billion a year and bonuses of 18.4 million, that's insanity. That's That came from Elaine. This is from Carol. I refuse to listen or watch CBC News anymore. You know the metrics in Saskatchewan. Nobody watches or listens to CBC. Here's from Dawn. Totally unfair to taxpayers and hungry folks in our country. From Trevor. Nobody I know watches or trusts CBC anymore. From Rita. Waste of taxpayers' money to fund bonuses on the executives. Should be a complete overhaul from the CEO and management. That came from Rose. Joanne, CBC has been a huge waste of taxpayers' money to fund this as soon as possible. From Dan, as a lifelong listener, CBC has lost its ways. So we had hundreds of responses from little old Saskatoon. 80%, 86%, major changes to the corporation or to fund them entirely. 86% out of Saskatoon. What do you say about those numbers? I say I travel this country from north to west to east, and I also have hundreds, if not thousands, of positive remarks back on how important 
CBC, Radio Canada, is in those communities that I have visited. In the north, in Yellowknife, in Whitehorse. How about Saskatchewan? And, and, by the way, in Saskatoon, too. Have you ever visited Saskatoon, Regina? Good for you. I have, both Saskatoon. I went to the York Festival. Excuse me, excuse me, just one minute. Some order, please. A question was asked of the witness. Can she finish answering it? And then you can go with the other question. Thank you. I would just point to, because there is a large Indigenous community in Saskatchewan, and we spend a lot of time uh, con- um, engaging with those communities in the development of our Indigenous strategy. And right. I would say, across the board, I have heard only, um, quite frankly, right. a willingness to work with CBC and with Radio Canada to change the narrative about Indigenous people in this country, something that this organization is 100% committed to. I've got 30 seconds 30 Kevin. seconds left. So from your strategy, public affairs and government relations person, on average, each, each visitor spends 37 minutes a month on your platforms. 37 minutes a month. Ms. Tate, that is two at issues. 37 minutes is nothing. You talk about 21 million each month are hitting your platforms. The number that stood out to me, they're on there for 37 minutes a month. It's deplorable. You're not reaching out to Canadians. 37 minutes a month. Think about that. Thank you, Mr. Wall. I now vote. I now vote. Thank you, Mr. Wall. I now go to Mr. Kurek. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, You talked a lot about uh, uh, trust and relying on the facts, and it is a fact that there were significant job cuts at CBC. In fact, cuts that were made just before Christmas. It is a fact that uh, uh, performance pay uh, uh, bonuses were 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 awarded uh, very generously to, uh, to to the tune of more than eighteen million dollars. And uh, uh, to reconcile that with your testimony here today is is quite something. So we did do some digging into these KPIs, the the key performance indicators, and uh, and some of the targets. And you talked uh, in your previous testimony before this committee a lot about uh, a process. But what I find very interesting is that uh, it's only the uh, uh, reports that come out of the CBC and uh, uh, where, where, where they fan over how great you're doing. Uh, to the tune of maybe the only place that you'd be more popular than that is at a Liberal cabinet meeting. But even today, you suggested that we shouldn't, uh, 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 to uh, uh, one of Mr. Cotto's questions, you said that you needed to be realistic in that. So these KPIs, this year, or this past fiscal year, you said uh, uh, your own metrics say you met 13 of the 14 performance targets. A massive increase from only meeting three of the 14 targets the previous year. Uh, Something doesn't smell right with that. When it comes to the actual meeting targets, tangible, we started going through some of that information and you lowered the KPIs for this past year. Uh, It's some of them quite significantly. Now, uh, Ms. Tate, compared to the previous year, three of 14 versus 13 of 14, uh, does that affect bonuses? Sorry, you, the years you're referring to? 20, so, 22, so tw- 23, and 23, 24, not 14, correct? Y- yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> what was the question? So, so in 2022, 2023, mm-hmm. you met three of 14 KPIs. This last year, you met 13 of 14. Did that affect the bonuses paid out? Of course it did. Yet, by your own information, you lowered those KPIs in order to uh, uh, see that they were met. So in other words, what you have, have, have stated is that by lowering the KPIs, your organization and those within management are receiving more information. Uh, what, could I, Mr. Goldblum, could I, resp- I, I, I respond to that? I'd um, like to ask, well, I'm, I'm just stating the facts, Ms. Tate. Mr. Goldblum, I'm wondering if you could share with this me, committee. Excuse me, I'm wondering excuse if, me, please. Point of order. Yes, Mr. I, I really do think if you're, if you're making such a grand statement, I think the, uh, the, the witness should be able to respond to it. That's just fair. I would. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Couture. To make that. One cannot 
make a statement without allowing the witness a chance to respond. So Ms. Tate, please. We have a very rigorous process in place for establishing KPIs on an annual basis. We look at previous performance, but most importantly, we look at what's happening in the industry. When you see a trend of 5% decline on television subscription, you don't ignore it. You adjust your KPIs accordingly, and we build in stretch. So what that means is every single KPI is looked at, and by the way, they are not all lowered. They are, in the, kids, in the case of kids, in the case of diversity and representation, they are numbered that are higher than the previous year. But just to be clear, we are not making up KPIs. They are based on what is going on in the industry. And I think you've heard on a number of occasions from others that this industry is in decline. It is an extremely challenging time. So how do you manage that and how do you keep your people motivated to go forward? You build in stretch. That uh, uh, stretch is a new word, and certainly there seems to be some stretching taking place here. Uh, Mr. Goldblum, can, can you commit to uh, release to this committee uh, the, the information related to uh, uh, recommendations that you have made for Ms. Tate's bonus and uh, recommendations that you would make to the government when it comes to severance? As I said before, uh, um, our communications with the government around the uh, performance recommendations of the CEO. My understanding is that's governed by privacy. So, okay, Th thank you. I do have one last but, but I, question. But I do want to say we will make public okay. the report done by the independent organization that's going to look at our compensation, and we'd be pleased to share those recommendations with you. Th thank you. Please, uh, please do, Ms. Tate. The CBC stopped broadcasting the Calgary Stampede a number of years ago. Why? I wasn't at the organization at that time, so I can't comment on the specifics of that decision. Is Western heritage and frontier culture important to the CBC? Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. It's why we're, it, we're rolling out more journalist positions in, in the West disproportionately to anywhere else in the country. So, so I want to nail down uh, specifically, you. could I you provide Mr. information related to the specifics around the Calgary Stampede to this committee, please? Thank you. I'm happy to.